going to take a look at the arpeggios of the major key 251 and 6251 chord progressions. Once again I'm going to split this into two separate sessions, beginning with some examples in the open position. So starting with the 251 in the key of C major, that would be D minor, G and C. But in the interest of variety, we're going to look at some examples in a different key, moving one step round the cycle of fifths to the key of G major. This means that the chords of the 251 progression are now A minor, D and G. Because for the moment we're dealing in simple triad chords, the tonic chord of G is actually the same chord form that we used as the 5 chord in the key of C major. So let's begin with this familiar chord and recall that we played the arpeggio in the lower octave using the same fingering that we use for the open position chord, that is finger 3, fret 3, string 6 to play the G, B on string 5 at fret 2, and then the open strings 4 and 3, D and G. In the upper octave we play the G on the open 3rd string, the 3rd B at fret 4 on the same string, and then the D and octave G on strings 2 and 1 at fret 3. So over the full two octaves. So now on to our two new arpeggios. Firstly the A minor. Now we can play the A minor arpeggio beginning with the open A on string 5, then the minor third of C, fret 3 on the same string, the fifth of E at fret 2, string 4, and then the octave A, fret 2, string 3, which again we can play either with rolling movement of the second finger or by bringing the third finger into play. Now here's the thing, I said previously that the highest note for which we have two full octaves in the open position is the A flat, that's from the fourth fret on string six up to the fourth fret on string one. However it's a very short stretch from here to the octave A at fret 5 on string 1, so I like to include the upper A along with my open position patterns. This means we can play the A minor arpeggio beginning fret 2 string 3, then the C falls on fret 1 string 2, E the 5th on the open string 1, and then we just reach up for the octave A string one. And finally the arpeggio for D major. For this we really only can reach one octave in the open position and it begins with the open D string, string four, then the major third, that's F sharp at the fourth fret on the same string. Remember we've moved one step round the cycle of fifths from C major, so we add one sharp to the key signature, and this is it, the F sharp. We then follow that with the fifth of A at fret two string three, and finally the octave D falls on string two, the B string. Of course because of the different tuning of this string, we move up one more fret space to play this at fret three. So now we have all three arpeggios, we can play them in sequence to follow the chord progression. As always we begin with the arpeggios in an ascending pattern and we begin with the relevant arpeggios in the lower octave. So A minor, D and G. So here's another one of those 
those situations we end the D arpeggio with finger three here up on string two and we need to start the G arpeggio in theory with the same finger down on string six. There are two ways of getting around this. We could play the ascending D major arpeggio ending with finger four and now finger three is available to play the G arpeggio in the normal position. Alternatively we can use the normal fingering for the D arpeggio and when it comes to the G instead of fingers three and two we use fingers two and one. So we can play either or we then practice the arpeggios in the descending form. So from A to D to G. Lastly, we play the arpeggios back and forth. So A, D, G. Then we can do the same thing using the arpeggios where available in the upper octave. So we begin with our A here and we can play descending and back and forth. turn the 2-5-1 progression into a 6-2-5-1 progression, we simply need to add the 6 chord. In the key of G major, this would be an E minor chord, giving us 6-2-5-1 of E minor, A minor, D and G. But the E minor is also the 2 chord in the key of D major, so let's spread our wings a little bit further and take a look at the 6-2-5-1 progression in the key of D. So 2-5-1 would be the chords of E minor, A major and D major. We now want to add the 6 chord, so that's E, B, F sharp, G, A, B. So we need a chord of B minor to complete the for this chord progression. In the case of the B minor there isn't a particularly convenient open position fingering for the chord but we can still find the arpeggio in the open position. We begin with the note B on string 5 at the 2nd fret. The minor 3rd is then D which we can play on the open 4th string. The 5th F sharp we can play at fret Four on string four, and finally the octave B on string three at fret four. As before, as an alternative, we can use the third finger to play the fifth, the F sharp, if that makes the fingering any easier for you. And in the case of the B minor arpeggio, we don't have a full second octave available. Okay, so the two chord is now the E minor. We can play this in the lower octave using the open E sixth string. Then the minor third of G is at the third fret. The fifth of B at the second fret and the octave E second fret fourth string again using either the second or the third finger. In the upper octave we start with the E at the second fret string four. The minor third is then the 
open G string at string 3. And the fifth is B, which we can play either on the open B string or with finger 4 on string 3. Now in this case, I think it's better to actually play the open B string, otherwise you have to jump two strings to get from the B here to the octave E on string 1. So this arpeggio is very simply played with one finger, fretting string four, and then the next three strings open. Next up, the five chord, which is A major. Once again, we begin our A arpeggio on the open A string. But now the third is a major third, which is C sharp. So here's the new sharp in our new key. Finger 4, fret 4, string 5, and then the 5th and octave fall at fret 2 on strings 4 and 3, as they did for the minor arpeggio. Or with the 3rd finger. Once again, with a little stretch of the finger to the 5th fret, we can play this arpeggio in the upper octave, so we begin fret 2, string 3, and now we're playing a major third, so that's going to fall on the same fret on string 2. And then as before, open E string, the octave A at the 5th fret. And once more, we can bring the 3rd finger into play if you don't want to play two consecutive notes with the same finger. And finally the D major. Once again, as this is a simple triad chord, it's the same form of the D major that we used as the five chord in our G major chord progression. So we already know the fingering, that's open D string, F sharp, the third, Four, A, the fifth at fret two, and the octave D at fret three, string two. And now we're ready to practice these arpeggios in sequence around the chord progression. B minor. A major, D major, and descending. arpeggios in the upper octave, descending, and back and forth. for the minor triad arpeggio and see how we can fit it into transposable versions of the 251 and 6251 progressions. So please join me again.